Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls across the internet and around the world. It's Robert Star Phoenix and let's get into Just Breed Part 9. Today is the Mark of the Winga and the Assault on the Wall of Banalus. So let's get started. Alright, so last episode the Village Elder asked us to dig a, a trench from the oasis. As you can see there's a lovely little lake over here. Oh great, and some skeletons. Anyway, um, this map, it's not the object to kill all the monsters to do this. Yeah, and don't worry about those crawlers up there. They're not going to move unless we get close to them, and we're not going to even get remotely close to them. The rest of this stuff, on the other hand, is a different story. Skeletons, pythons, falconers, oh my. So, the key here is to take that lovely little pickaxe that we were given and attack the... attack, um... Why are you not showing the fight command? Oh wait, maybe I gotta go the other way. Hold on a second. Let's try this again. There we go, fight command. With equip, <laughs> pickaxe equip, you fight the rocks and dig a hole. Uh, I like that. Haha. <laughs> okay, anyway, the rest of this, uh, let uh, Roland and Orloff uh, just decimate the rest of this stuff. Your hero's party's pretty much not gonna be fighting. And you're only gonna fight these 12 uh, monsters here. You're not gonna be fighting the crawlers. I said, like I said, your objective here is just to dig that trench and go back into town and get the Mark of the Winga. So, nothing, nothing unusual here. Just do your usual killing the monsters and chucking you boomerangs. Good night, mate! Yeah, this, this particular episode is going to be kind of long. Uh, I'm expecting it to probably be at least an hour long, maybe... I'm hoping it's not going to take two hours, because I'm going to put um, the whole thing with the Winga and the wall all together. And I can't remember how long it takes me to assault the wall of Banalus, so... Yeah, wow, that Freebane... Those Freebane spells have been stinking lately. Okay, Patty, kill that thing. Anyway... Yeah, as you remember from my last episode, the crawlers don't get to attacking unless you get within their range. And they said we're gonna try to sit down here near the near the oasis and just uh, pick apart everything that gets close to us. Obviously, the falconers only move close enough to chuck their version of a boomerang at us, so we'll have to go out of our way to kill them eventually. And it's not gonna be too difficult. So with only 12 monsters, it's not gonna be a difficult task. The hard part is going through the number of turns it's going to require to attack all those rocks. <laughs> I like how it's, it's called the fight command even though you're digging. I guess when they coded the game they couldn't figure out a better way to do it. Now the pickaxe itself is actually a melee weapon. Uh, you can use it if you want to. It's weaker than the iron sword. I wouldn't really recommend it. but. Uh, I think I mentioned it in one of my other... I think I mentioned in the last episode, if you want to save a couple of bucks, you know, you can strap it on someone like Roland or Orloff and let them occasionally pick at something with it, but... Otherwise, just leave it in your inventory. I don't remember. I don't think you can sell it, so you're kind of stuck with it. Die. It's, this is the classic, like, yeah, we're going to put a lake in a forest right in the middle of the desert and call it an oasis. Yes, yeah, this part right here, it's just, just kind of kill it. Just kill the stuff, kill the stuff, kill the stuff. I like how they coded the game so the Horma, the Hospice, the Horfa, and the Hospice spells all look like hearts. Every time I see that, I think of Sailor Moon. Which, by the way, they did make a Sailor Moon RPG, which is pretty interesting. My, uh, my buddy Relquin will attest to my playing the game multiple times. Oh, level up! You know, I tested my playing the game multiple times and like 
just yeah it's it oh Krulays all right Krulays uh, Krunus is the ice attack spell Krulays is basically a bigger chunk of ice you're chucking at it so where Krunus was you know doing about you know it does like 40 damage or so Krulays does somewhere around 70 or 80 but it's only a single attack spell so you have to kind of judge what you'd rather do it's a really nice thing to use against a powerful like single monster so uh, Roland can definitely do like a big like he can do a, his version of a falcon punch on it <laughs> and just wipe it out uh, but against groups like that you know it's obviously not as useful but it's still fun It'll come in handy later when we have to fight something bigger than uh, skeletons and crawlers and stuff. Alright, so as you can obviously tell, there's three more turns because I got three more rocks I have to cut. So, And let's just kind of get everybody sitting over here. So I definitely don't have to worry about crawlers. Don't even want to look at them. And he said, your point here isn't to clear out the monsters, because even if you do and you go back into town and come back out, you're going to have to fight them all over again. And, um, while it's good for experience points if you want them, I, I'm really not, like, trying to, like I said, like I said earlier, I'm not trying to grind out experience points unnecessarily. I'm just going to, I'm just going to finish digging the, digging this trench, or whatever the hell you want to call it. One more. Yay! And you draw water from the oasis. Ba -ba -ba -ba! All right. Now that we've got that done, we go back into town and let's see if the elder lives up to his freaking promise and gives us the mark of the wingo. Otherwise, I might have to shove him into this oasis head first. Hey, I've drowned somebody once before. I'll, I'm not afraid to do it again. <laughs> All right, elder, give me my mark of wingo. Let's go. Let's see what he has to say. Oh my god! You did it! <laughs> there you go. Mark of Winga. Let's go take a quick snooze. Get all of our magic back. Now since um, Roland got a level and I remember I think Orloff's a level up on everybody else too. I'm going to use the main hero's party now to do the bulk of the attacking so I'm just gonna send them straight up into the into the uh, crawlers a little bit at a time obviously so let's go round two ding 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 so yeah not even gonna waste time just gonna shoot straight up here and just gonna let him unload all of his geese arc spells yeah let's just auto uh, I'm gonna auto it hell with it I need to get them up here. And Roland's going to do the exact same thing he did before. He's going to just take care of this one little party by himself. Nice! That level up helped his magic damage. That level up just helped in general. Ah, let's auto this mess. I'm always in time. Star Phoenix, why are you wasting time? Let's just do it. Okay. Warloff is just gonna sit there and let them attack. Yeah, I, like I said, I remember Orloff has got a bit higher experience. I don't want them getting too far ahead of each other. Although Orloff, uh, no, there's another. I'll talk about that later. All right, so here come the skeletons and the pythons and the falconers. Bring it. I have these flying stone discs. Have your name on them. Well, I wish I had a better spell than Meryl right now. But we'll work on that later. Do I come from a land down under? I said, yeah, I, I'm going to be singing a little bit here because I'm in one of those moods. So. Let's see. Can I hit all three of them? Uh, yes! 
Awesome! Yeah, we're all in clean house already. These are three of you, three of these. Guess what happens? You die. One, two. Oh. You live. We shall spoon you to death. Cane you to death. Something. I don't know. There you go. Dead. Alright, now I'm gonna let Orloff have fun because this little skeleton down here is in just the right spot. Let him kill the stragglers. Now, all the weapons have different sound effects. Um, like the boomerangs, there's a, a boomerang weapon later in the game that actually has a different sound effect to it. It sounds very, very metallic when it flings. And when it gets to that point, that you know, obviously I'll show you that. Hey, Python, what are you doing? If I had a choice between going to Orlov's party and going to the main hero's party, I go to the main hero's party. He's not nearly gonna kill you as quickly. And eh, Iron Sword, let's get that back on there. I don't want to forget it later. All right, here, eat this. Bye, bye, Falconer. That was my plan. Oh, oh. Yeah, on the side because I've been working so much, um, I haven't had time to. Uh, record my next set of videos properly. I started and then I realized I fell asleep sitting at the uh, computer. So I'm gonna have to redo that part obviously. I, it's three hours of me just sitting there and used up all my recording space. Let's kill this thing. Can I reach? You know what? That would be so nice to put spears back onto the heroes. Yes, yeah, so I keep a I keep a, um, an extra like disk space reserved just for recording my videos, and apparently because I let the thing run so long <laughs> that I actually used up all the space. And I woke up and it said like insufficient memory. Okay, yeah. So what I'm doing here, I just want to show you. This is the wall of Banalus, and this is oh. Look at this, all these crawlers. Eleven of them. I wonder why they put eleven here. Anyway, that's a that's supposed to scare you. But we know how to deal with crawlers. They're not scary at all. We're just going to not get right up in their faces. And we're going to go to town on them. Dooby dooby doo. Dooby doo wah. Eat Mikey Sark. So, what you're going to want to do here is as you're fighting these, um, the hell? As you're fighting these, you're going to want to stay in the spaces between them. So this way here, they can never roll at you because, like I said, they attack only line of sight. They don't move. So, even if you're close to them, if you're not in their direct line of sight, they are not going to move. So, just, they'll just sit there and look ugly. Little bugs, squish. And with Roland's party, I'm just gonna go up the left-hand side here. I'm gonna let him attack, you know, whatever pieces need to be attacked. Orloff's gonna sit on the right-hand side, and he's gonna do the same thing. He's gonna spam his geese to help out. And the girls will chuck their boomerangs, but I'm gonna try not to actually kill any of these if I can help it. And we'll leave them in a weakened state. Maybe, well, maybe except for this one. Yeah, I'll just get rid of that one, yeah. yeah. I'll leave them in the mostly weakened state and use the geese arc spam to uh, weaken them all. So that way their hero here can just walk up and suck up some experience points because he needs them. Okay, that one went all the way up in the corner. <laughs> Yay for random number generation. Now, if you want to, you can walk up here with your other your fighters and stuff and just like kind of stab them with your spears, but you know, I don't usually recommend it. 
Wow, that only hit one. That sucked. Well, I got rid of the one I was aiming for, so... That was the important part. And stuff like this, you can use Krunus and Krules to, uh... Do a little damage on the side. See, so actually, Krunus doesn't do a horrible amount of damage. I think these crawlers are just, like, a little resistant to magic in general. But... If I had used Krulays, I probably could have killed it outright, but... It gives me an excuse to move the party up a little bit at a time, too. In hindsight, I probably should use Krulays. Oh well. There's always next time, right? Now, I'm not using Frybane because I don't want Orloff to actually kill everything. And seeing how there's usually only like three or four of them here, Geesark is... Um, point for point, the better attack to use. Especially the way he's traveling. Now, if the hero had Freebane... Mm. Freebane. I, I always pronounce it both ways. I you know, honestly don't know which way it's supposed to be pronounced, so I kind of switch between the pronunciations. So. Sorry about that. Anyway, okay. Look at this. I cut them down. There's only seven left. And let's trot on up. Ooh. I don't think I have enough... I'm out of magic. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> what would you do if I sang out of tune? <laughs> would you stand up and walk out on me? Alright, so now since he's out of magic, we're just gonna have Isaac have to try to shoot Maros here. One... Oh, cool! Three! Nice! And we got... Yep, that one's dead, so I don't have to worry about him rolling around. What? Hey! Bastard. I. Said. Die! There we go. <laughs> so yeah. So, like I said, this this map isn't hard. Um, It just looks intimidating with all those crawlers there, but if you know how to handle them... Like I said, piece of cake. Yeah! Level up! Hold up your... Hold up your sword! Your power sword and scream, I have the power! Ooh, around. Burlays! Isaac has burlays! Yes! That will make things much more fun. Of course, burlays uses up more magic than you want to shake a stick at. Why? Oh well. I should use burlays, but whatever. Anyway, but that around spell that the the main hero just learned around is a really interesting spell. It's um, it's a little hard to describe, but in effect, the name of it it does exactly what the name says. It makes things go around. Uh, it does a fair bit of damage though, in the in the confined little space that it has an area of effect, it does a fair little bit of damage. So, it's something that it's situational. Like I won't use it that much because I can't really find many places to use it where it's like super effective but in certain situations uh, it proves to be a good little spell and the fact that it does a solid 25 to 40 damage when you first get it you know it makes it worth using once in a while but it, it's a very close range spell like the hero has to be pretty close to the target and then it has a it takes a while for it to resolve itself too so there's that's the other issue with it All right. Let's see. Uh, no, you know what? Yeah, Burlays cost ten. Ha ha ha. You know what? But I'm gonna use it. Uh, let's see. Let's back up here. I wanna get into the right spot. Here, Burlays. I like how the screen turns dark, like your burnt color. As you can see, it didn't really do a whole lot of individual damage. Not much more than Marrow does, but um, later on, I think it's like I said, these crawlers. I think they're just like resistant to everything. But later on, that you saw the area of effect. The area of effect is actually really, really useful because everything in that area of effect, minus what's right in front of um, Isaac, because that little, that little, um, mm, I guess that little 
stick looking thing is that is the null space where he's actually having to focus the magic through so anything that stands right in front of him won't get hurt but everything in that area of effect gets burnt it's a crowd controlling spell so it's very very useful it's, like i said it burns your magic a lot so you can't you can't use it very often at all but i definitely recommend it in tight spaces when you need to just like cook stuff Welcome to Isaac's Barbecue Pit! Let's see. Lucy, you got it? One, two, good. Soften them up a bit. Yeah, I'm getting bored of these things, so I'm just gonna try to kill them now. Oh yeah, one thing to, to say about this map. Before you kill everything, you need to activate the Mark of Winga. And the Mark of Winga has to be activated by the main hero. There's... So, if I can kill this crawler, am I going to kill it? Oh, nice. Oh, damn it. Oh, well. Alright, so here, I'm going to go ahead, use the wing mark. And summon the winga. And the winga is a giant tank. Okay. <laughs> Yes, they have a mobile town. And their mobile town is apparently is a giant tank. And it's under a cloaking device or something, apparently, because the only way to make it appear is with the Marco Wingo. How strange. There we go, battle's done, but guess what? You don't get the victory screen. Why? Well, now the hero, the main hero, has to walk and hit done on top of the uh, mobile Wingo in order to effectively end this map. Just like entering a town, which means you pretty much have to end the map by having him hit done on the town. So we're just going to chase the chase them down now. It should only take a couple of turns because it's going to be moving my way and I'm going to be moving its way. So here we go. giant tank in the sand. And there we go. You know what? I'm going to make everybody stand on it. I'm going to make sure we're done. Yo ho! We Winga welcome you who hold the mark of Winga. Welcome to our little fortress in the sand. And yes, this is a functional town, which means it has almost everything you need. Um, I can't remember if it has a weapon or an armor shop, though. Uh, we'll rest first, and I'll take a look around here. Oh. If I was only popular with the ladies, I'd do anything to get popular with girls. That, my friends, is little bitty Hans. We'll deal with him later. Yes, iron spears! Boy, these things are expensive, huh? 720! Well, I know how many of them I need, so let's go ahead. We're going to outfit everybody. Heroes, fighters, everybody's getting them. Now, yes, technically I could buy the iron bows, but again, iron bow versus wooden boomerang. Boomerang still has that better range. And I'm going to keep using it for a little while longer. I thought this was a place that had the bow guns. Hmm. Must be the, must be the next place. So yeah, iron spears. Well, for the heroes, it's not that much of an upgrade. I think it only gives like two or three points. But with everyone else, it is a six-point upgrade. So you're definitely gonna notice the difference. Let's see, how much is it all off? Yeah, okay, so two points. But yeah, you know what? They get their range back. That's the important thing. They get to have their uh, extended reach weapon again and everybody else I'm just gonna upgrade them make sure that we have everything we need like as you can see I used up half of the gold I had I had over 10,000 now I'm down to five so this is why I said like 
buying stuff in this game, you have to decide what you want before you do it. Weapons are usually a better upgrade in armor, although, you know, don't ignore your armor. We are going to be upgrading armor here eventually. I might go back and buy some coppers for everybody just to have them fully upgraded there. Let's sell off all of our stuff because, hey, you know what? We want some of our money back. I think this should give us about you know, 6,500, give or take. Maybe not quite that much. Well, Alright, I'm going to see if I can sell this pickaxe. Can I get rid of it? Nope. Can't place a price in this one, sorry. <laughs> sorry, mate. You're stuck. So yeah, this place also got a tool shop so you can buy your, you know, your herb tools if you need them. I don't think I use that many, so I'll buy a couple just to be safe. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I got plenty. I got more than enough life herbs. Why'd that do that? Couple of those. This apparently is the Wingo's engine room. I'm just going to show you the whole place because I don't usually run through town and show you everything, but. And this up here is the Wingo control room. This will play a part in a second, but. I like that. It has a steering wheel like a pirate ship. Alright, matey. Welcome to the SS Wingo. And, yeah, okay, there isn't an armor. Is there an armor shop here? I can't remember. Nope. Monsters in the Wall of Baneless. Hey, I heard the priestesses are being abducted and taken there. Oh. Guess what, then? I guess this is our next destination. We're going to get into the Great Wall. Yeah. There's no armor shop here. Maybe? No, okay. Just checking. I wanted to make sure because I can't remember. I should have wrote this stuff down. Note to self, Star Phoenix. Write stuff down after you do a playthrough. So the next time you record something, you actually know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay, so... And... Let's go talk to everybody up here. Having a strategy meeting wall. A strategy meeting now. Jeez, I can't read. Hey. They asked us to join their assault. You want to help? Sure, why not? Sure, let's go ahead and do it. Take the empty chair. I'm sitting in it already. Of course. We'll use the town as a battering ram. What better way to do it? We have a giant tank. Crunch. Alright, so this is explaining how we're going to actually be doing the next battle. So... We're basically going to leave one entire group behind, go through these walls, and repeat it until we get to the end. Oh, wait, we only have three armies! If we need to do three points, we don't have anybody left! Eh. And then... <laughs> Here comes Hans. Yeah, sorry I'm late. You blithering fool! <laughs> Alright, Hans! I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to be doing my um, my Kim Jong-il from Team America World Police voice a lot for that, so I apologize now. Alright, Hans, you're going to join the party! Can't you see we're freaking busy? <laughs> oh yeah, since we're going to assault this place, we're going to let you take control of our mobile town and you can crash it into the wall for us. Must be, must be an insurance thing, as long as it's not our fault. Yep. Now we got control of Hans's party. I'm gonna check his people. Yeah, you notice how we didn't get that little the Tierra one off thing? It's because he hasn't actually joined our party yet. He's a temporary. But we're gonna still equip him. 
since we don't have boomerangs here, guess where I get to go? I want to go to Darvia. Darvia. Oof! Now I wonder how hard that Strim spell actually hurts if they drop like that. And in the meantime, we're also going to pick up some armor. We gotta see something here. Do they all have copper? Leather. 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 Nope. Copper. Okay. We got two leathers there. I got fighters, a couple other people, so I'm just going to buy some coppers to outfit everybody. Catch up on some armor now. I think six, if I remember right. I think everybody else has coppers except for the fighters because I only upgraded their shields last time. So if I get six, I should be good. If not, well, I can buy more. And, you know, with Hans's group, I'm going to unequip their iron bows, even though, uh, even though they do decisively more damage. Um, you know, again, I've got that whole thing about, well, maybe I needed seven. Am I going to be one short? Bollocks. Oh yeah, but, um, like I said, I'm, I'm all about that range that the, bo the boomerangs give, and... Um, yep, yeah, I'm going to be one short. Oh well. Buy one more. And I said the iron bows definitely are stronger at this point. And if you really want to, you can do it. I just, like I said, I just prefer the, the versatility and the range. And the the boomerangs still do a decent amount of damage. Alright, give me some of my money back. God, that's so disappointing when you sell armor. Like, you sell it back for half of the price, but you spent like... Nine times the price buying the new armor. Or eight, or eight times the price. Something like that. So yeah, this and the boomerangs, and we'll go back to the winga. We'll go attack the wall of Bangless. I think it's just Hans and the one other guy that has the the bow, so. Right, Hans. Here's your freaking boomerang! Can't you see I'm busy? Sorry. First time I saw Hans in this game, that immediately came to my mind was um, Kim Jong Il in that movie Team America World Police, where he's yelling at Hans, Hans uh, Blicks. He calls him Hans Briggs. He Hans Briggs. <laughs> uh, it's like when he feeds into the Shark Tank. Okay, let's go save the game now that we got everything we need. Okay, Wingus, since you told me I could drive your town into a wall, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I hope you have your insurance paid up, that's all I gotta say. Alright, please sit in the chair and take control, Winga. Let's do it. Now the Winga moves like you do, so you can actually see it moves at walking speed and you can hit the B button. Crunch! <laughs> Rolling. Charge! Alright, so here we go. Now we're going to assault the prison. Now, as you can see, everybody's in a confined space. Hans, I'm just going to... His army I'm going to leave behind first since... But... With everybody in their boomerangs, they're going to be all ranging. Oh, and by the way, his wizard, his wizard Mikey, has geese arc. Yes, a wizard actually has that spell this time, so you know what's going to happen with him. He's just going to be, uh, he's going to be helping out from his little corner of the prison. 
Everybody else, I'm just going to move straight forward. Confined little space here. Now, I am going to use some of their magic. I'm going to try not to overuse it because there are things about this uh, prison. Like, the parties can still help each other even though they're separated, so you want to try to reserve some of their magic and make sure that they can help each other. And none of the monsters here or anything you haven't fought already. With the exception of, I think, one thing. But. Then again, at least I'm thinking, you know, I think there's just the one thing in here that's a little bit different, but everybody else is pretty much the same. I really can't do nothing with Orloff because I can't really move him, so. Look at this skeleton. Oh, God, grief. THE BLOODY SKELETONS! Yes. Monster dens. We got a lot of them in this map, so get used to it. As you can tell, you're going to go through each section. And you're going to have monster dens spitting out monsters. So you're going to have to shut down the monster dens. Now the thing is, you don't want to hit the switches here until you have your section clear. And I'll show you why in a little bit here. But Oh crap, I forgot to take the bow off. Oh well. Well, at least you'll be able to shoot in a straight line. That was unfortunate. Yeah, Mikey doesn't have a whole lot of spells, but he does have Geese Arc. And then, the only person in that group that isn't going to be of any help is their fighter, but I don't really need him right now anyway. So yeah, this is a confined little space. This is pretty much like the enemy base you uh, attacked earlier in the game. The only difference is you have all your armies. So the hardest part is going to be just navigating everybody around each other so you, everybody can get a piece of stuff. And that's like I said, that's why I preferred the boomerangs here. Because at least you can shoot around people instead of having to try to line up with the monsters. Now I've got enough room, I can actually move Warlock. Yes, and those monster dens will keep spitting skeletons out until I get them. The Jarks and the Falconers are the official door guards, and you know, because they have all ranging attacks too. They'll just present the problem in and of themselves. You know what? I'll show let's see. Well here, I'll show you what happens when you open the door too early. Now, Mikey's only got like four uses of this, and the four uses would be used here. Because you're not going to be able to move them at all. Yeah, and I forgot the thing. How did I make it one short? That sucks. Oh well. So yeah, Hans will pick up a little bit of experience here, but the main crux of the battle is going to come from everybody else. 37 points of damage. Eat my spear! Ooga booga ooga booga. So Hans is probably to pick up a little bit of experience with a couple of things he gets to kill after that. 
so the order the order of people that you leave behind um, you leave Hans behind first uh, Orloff's party is next because there's a special reason for that Orloff's party being left behind and then Roland's party and then finally the main hero's party you can kind of pick who you want the last one but it should either be the main hero or Orloff because they're the uh, I'm sorry, I mean the main hero or Roland because they, they're usually the two best ones equipped to handle the the final bit of it. And you see, you can choose whoever you want. Hansa is probably the one party you don't want to be at the end. It's because he's a little underpowered right now. Stupid movement things. Yes, and Isaac will get a chance to use his Berlaze. So this is why you don't want to open up the, the doors too early, because then you open up all the monster dens that are back behind the door. It's like an open invitation. That is the trigger for them. Open the door, open all the monster dens. And these skeletons uh, are starting to pour in. Having nightmares of another area, anybody? <laughs> yeah, me too. But thankfully, with all the extra people... I'm going to back Hans off of that switch now. I just wanted to show you that. done on that particular army opens and closes the gates so now that Hans's party is officially off for the switch the gate closes that'll keep the uh, monster dens from spewing any more skeletons out until we have a chance to get up there properly uh, these cramped quarters get on my nerves but it's nice having everybody able to attack I mean, 24 different attackers, or 23 here, give or take. You know, but this is manageable anyway because we're used to these monsters. So yeah, step one is to get everybody around, knock out a monster, step two is to open the switch, open the door, step three is to go through it, and then repeat, rinse and repeat until you get all the way around to the other side. I think to make things easier over there, I might want to put Hans up in one of the corners, just so he's closer to the action. The Jarks and the Falconers will not move no matter what because they're programmed to stay by the door. You have to get really close to them before they even think about it. These skeletons will charge at you relentlessly, as we all know. But you'll recover some good experience and some good gold in the process here because you'll have to kill everything so much. So why is it be able to pound that thing? I cane you!
Now that thing about this game, I wish they did. I wish they would have, like, made the the hero sprites parties different colors instead of all cyan. But sometimes it makes it really hard to figure out which ones you're using. I mean, I know that their actual, like, sprite colors show up when they're active, but sometimes if they're standing the right way, you can't tell who's who. Of course, with the exception of Warlock's party, because most of them are girls. Alright, let's bring Roland up and start the pounding of these things. This is getting to the point now where Hans's party is pretty much useless. I mean, consider, cons I could have brought a few of them around and let them fight here, but there's too many people in the battle as it is, and it would have made it harder to move around the people that I needed to move, so. That's why I left them back there. Let's see. Uh, hmm. What do I want to do here? Yeah, I'll definitely do that. I'll move. move Hans up in the corner so I have the most... so I can see everything. And at least Hans is a healer, so... He can help you spare some of your magic from Karen and everyone else. And Mikey can still attack. Well, he could attack at this point. There's no more Geesark spells. But at the very least, he can throw one more. And now your Hans's party is pretty much worthless. Oh boy, four more skeletons. So yeah, now that I got everybody close enough, I'm going to have to get rid of these darn skeletons. Try to get rid of these monster dens. So this is one of these slow, methodical maps. You really can't do much about it. You just have to be patient. Pick everything apart a little bit at a time. Let's see. <laughs> Blaze! Oh, that one did almost 50. Nice! Yeah. Let's bring... Let's bring Orloff around. I'm gonna use Orloff's party to soften them up. Because I'm going to use Roland's party to do the actual disarming here. So this way here... All that should be left... Is one Falconer. Now, some of you are probably looking at this and going, wait a minute, that door apparently is it yep it's a choke point <laughs> it's going to be a choke point because you can only fit one party through there at a time you're not dead yet die already there we go all right so now with the power of Hans. see can i hit everybody one more time just to make sure might as well use it while i got it That's it. Now we open the door, and all the monster dens are going to pick up where they left off, and I'm going to have skeletons flowing down through this thing. The ultimate choke point. You're going to spend more time here trying to carve through this little bitty space than you really should. So since Roland's closest, he's going to be the first one up. And I'm pretty much just going to auto my way through this because...
Oh, maybe I can squeeze both of them in here if I do this right. Yep. Either way. Either way, it's going to take a while to go through this. It's going to take a couple of turns to finally get everybody squeezed through. And there's nothing you can do about it. Auto actually helps here because if they can find the monster to attack, they're going to attack. You just get everybody as close as you can. And you're going to be doing a lot of that hitting done early because, like I said, you can't move Hans's party at all. <sighs> Stupid skeletons. I hate skeletons! I really, really hate skeletons. Oh, look at that! In the bottom corner, the priestesses! Yay! So we know what our goal is now. We're gonna go save the girls. Alright, let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna back him off a little bit and let's see if I can get some people around here. I hate these small confined spaces. Getting through these gaps is actually easier as you go through here because you don't have to deal with sucking three parties through it. You're sucking two through the next one and one through the last one. The downside is that there are so many monsters you have to deal with. Cain. It's a good thing they let you walk through your uh, fellow allies here. Yeah, I forgot you can't move that far. See, the, the, the movement here is going to be an issue because you have to get everybody up close enough to your heroes to actually move up far enough. So that's why I'm kind of moving everybody up and rolling is probably going to be the last one I move here. Or maybe next to last. Nope. Nope. I can reach. Now I can move rolling up. There we go. Alright, we broke through. And Orloff and his girls are just going to take their sweet time because they can't really do anything. Yeah, so you see where the Jarks and the um, Falconers are there. They're kind of sitting in the middle of everything. More blasted skeletons! Now, they're getting easier and easier to kill, but the problem is, there's just so many of them. Party into action here. Got them off to one side now, so I make it a little bit easier to bring up the others. And my plan is here is to hopefully to make enough room for Orloff's party to actually get up through here. still kill enough of these skeletons to keep their numbers small. Remember, because they regenerate four of them every turn, it means that the only way you're going to be able to stay ahead of them is you have to kill these four of them. 
Thank you, Patty. And start chucking boomerangs at the, the front jerk. Never-ending nightmare. The cannonball. This is just so grindy. Can't do anything about it really though. guys up here and we'll just start getting them situated so they can start shutting these monster dens down. Oh, uh, really? Fine. I wonder... I wonder if it's because the fighters are so far down there. I like that. The fighters can go up there. Stupid movement block. All right, so we got one down. All right, Orloff, have a little fun. Tire of the Bones of Doom. Oh! Oops. I'll let someone die. It will. the skeleton and I shall bring her back. But first, let's get rid of the monster then. Alright, so that takes care of the back door. And... Alright, Herb. No more napping on the job. Come back. Make sure everyone's healed up. Oh wow, there's actually quite a few people got hurt a little bit. Okay. Orlays. Yeah, six of them right there. That was a good hit. Die, die, die. Wow, 52. Holy moly. And let us consider that crowd controlled. Um, 
Yeah, while I was in the middle of recording my voice, um, apparently my software has another little glitch I did not know about. Uh, it apparently has a one hour and one second time limit. <laughs> so what happened was, um, yeah, I was in the middle of talking and all of a sudden it stopped on me. So, yeah, I'm kind of recording this a little bit after the fact, so... Um, I always learn something new about the software I'm using. So if I'm going to talk, I'm going to have to make sure I do it at an hour at a hour at a time, or otherwise I'm going to have to record double tracks like I'm doing now. Also, I noticed something too that the audio started getting a little loud to sync because of that, so I apologize if it sounds like that. Another little thing I'll have to learn how to fix later. Alright, so we're down to two monster dens. That means two skeletons at a time. At least that's the idea right now. And Lucy was able to hit all four of those. Very impressive. Try to clear a hole here so the other parties can run through. consider that a worthy hole there. Yeah, this whole making videos thing has been a learning experience for me. I've um, seen how the video quality can be improved by doing certain things and now I've learned that my audio is gonna have is gonna be a little bit more of a challenge than I thought it would be. That's okay. It's all part of the growing pains, right? And my snack of choice right now, just as a random, completely random thing, as if I'm not being random enough already, my snack of choice right now is a chicken sandwich with a couple of slabs of uh, provolone cheese and some pickles. My own version of a Chick-fil-A sandwich. Not quite as good, but it's only because I didn't butter the bread. But if anybody who lives down south, they know what I'm talking about when I talk about Chick-fil-A. To quote the great comedian Jeff Foxworthy, a Chick-fil-A sandwich is a type of thing that if you sat the sandwich on top of your head, your tongue would beat your brains out to get at it. <laughs> it is that yummy. I remember I spent some time away from the south and I didn't have an access to a Chick-fil-A. And I got back home to the south and... Yum, Chick-fil-A. Alright, so Orlov's party is going to be the one that closes up the monster dens and gets at the switch here, I hope. Let's see. What am I doing? Patty? Patty? Alright, cool. I can at least get the one. I doubt I'm going to be able to get the other one. Yeah. Well, yeah, Lucy's not going to reach. Maybe this one. No? Hmm. Alright, well, I'm going to set myself up instead to take care of the skeleton and as quickly as possible because when it comes out it's going to be hungry for beating up on somebody. And it's going to run into its worst nightmare on its way out. And having the priestesses down there is just annoying. It's like such a... It's like, Come help us! We're trapped here! We're waiting for you! We can see you, we just don't know where you are! No bones about it, you are the last skeleton. Well, at least on this side of the gate. Bring everybody else around. Now, oddly enough, is the last two sections are actually harder because you only you're only going to have the two parties, and then eventually you're only going to have one. Um, but they put more monster dens in the last two sections. As if it wasn't painful enough already, you have to cut through an extra set of monsters. And 
not going to activate the switch yet. Let's get everybody as close as we can. Oh, and by the way, just to let you guys know, this broadcast is not gluten-free. I am eating a whole wheat sandwich, so... I don't, I don't think celiac disease uh, affects you aud audibly, but just let you know, this broadcast is not gluten-free. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's stand on it, <clears throat> open the door, let's crash the gate, and look what's waiting for us, skeletons, lovely, So just this takes so long that you just have to literally walk around it. It's not like you can. It's not like you can like step on. It. Oh wow! Look at this. Monster dens. Monster dens. You know we are monsters, and we're going to be monsters about it now. You're just going to make your life hard. Thankfully, I can cut skeletons down pretty quick now. <clears throat> yeah, he's just not going to be a little king to death, so I'm just going to sit him off right here. No, let's try it anyway. Ooh. So those skeletons all the way in the back, they're going to have time to spawn, and spawn, and spawn. The nice thing is I only put one Jark there. <laughs> That's one slight happy thing, so I'll take it. I'm going to shut down your home. I'm sorry. But you guys need to go. Good, I can reach. By the way, if anybody's curious about the type of music I listen to, I listen to just about everything, except for um, rap, hip-hop, and R&B. I don't like that too much. I will listen to some of it, but um, mainly, I'm the type of person... Well, okay, with the, uh, before I get into that, Orloff, now that I've got everyone through the gate, I'm going to set Orloff's party <coughs> up along the top wall there where the priestesses are. Only because I know what's coming. After all, rescuing the priestesses isn't going to just be simple as walking into their room, is it? But yeah, back to the music. The music I listen to, I, I grew up listening to country music, and I know some of you are groaning at that, but look, country music actually is really, really good music. If you get beyond... A lot of people don't like it because they don't like the twang to it. They don't like the fact that a lot of the songs are about real life and about <laughs> a lot of, of one of my friends said, so yeah, all it's about is like girlfriends, trucks, and getting drunk. But there's actually more to it than that. There's a lot more... Country music I've always thought was a lot more about life than anything else. Of course, I got into uh, listening to metal. I, uh, and symphonic and, you know, Crash... And just, you know, metal in general, I, I've really gotten to enjoy. And then there's a lot of other music I listen to now. Lately I've been into this kick where I've been listening to a lot of independent people. I've listened to 
the piano guys and Lindsey Sterling and Peter Hollins and stuff like that lately. Which, by the way, you can look up all that stuff on YouTube if you don't have any idea who they are. Now, let's see, with Hans here, I'm gonna... I can't remember what I want to do with his party quite yet. I either want to put him near the bottom of this room where the priestesses are, or I'm gonna stick him in a corner. I'm not quite sure what I want to do with him yet. I might stick him up at the top and just wait. Okay, so these annoying skeletons are gonna have the advantage of being able to run around the wall. So I gotta cut through them. Roland, this is gonna be more your job than anything else now. This is where saving those geese arc spells came in handy. Hopefully the random one or two discs will hit the Jark and the Falconers and not all the Skeletons, but if they hit the Skeletons it makes it easier because I can go through them that much faster. But yeah, one of and speaking back to the music thing, um, one of one of the people I follow still greatly and I still do, even though she has not produced any music publicly that I know of in the last couple of years, is um, Petra Metal Queen. She's actually can I follow her on Facebook here. They like say she hasn't put anything out in a good little while. She's a school teacher, so teaching all the young ins is much more important than putting out the music. But when she does put out her music, I greatly enjoy it. She's got these nice little growls and uh, other things with her voice that she does that makes her music uh, very unique. I, say, I like I like finding people who aren't just about getting famous. They're more just like they enjoy their music. As I've gotten older, I like people who really enjoy their music because I think they put out better quality music. I mean, yeah, I mean, the you, know, you can listen to your Maroon 5s, your Taylor Swift's, your, you know, your Garth Brooks, your Metallica's, and whatever else that you listen to. And, I mean, their music is good, but Sometimes I feel like there's no heart in their music. Okay, so line them up across the top wall like that and just let them sit there. There's going to be a reason for that later. And Hans, for now I'm just going to shove them right here. I may change my mind later. I can't remember if there's something I need them for or not. Yeah, but with the musicians now, like I look for ones that have more heart in their music and I mean like you know, Lindsay Sterling is one of those exceptions. She's, she she obviously got famous. And she's like doing... Oh! Monster Den is activated over there. Hmm. She obviously got famous and is doing tours and stuff now. And her videos like all over the place. And she went back to America's Got Talent as a, a guest star. And doing all sorts of collaborations. She did one with John Legend, which I thought was completely fun. But, you know, generally I like, I like music that has more to it than just, you know, the artist is there to make the money on it. And I feel like as long as... That's the kind of music I like listening to now. I will still listen to popular music. I will still listen to stuff that plays on the radio. Like, um, like Maroon 5 put out a, has a single that's been playing on the radio quite a bit, but I actually kind of like that song. But, for the most part, the stuff on the radio kind of bores me now. So, at my, at my actual job, if people there weren't so anti-country um, music, I would actually play the country music station more, but... Instead, I play this, um... This 80s, 90s, and, you know, modern pop rock station. Uh, they play they play pretty much everything as long as people request it okay so we got one set of skeletons one set of falconers down there stupid skeletons are starting to get on my nerves up here I, of course I, I will say this as many times in this game as possible it's like these skeletons get on my nerves 
All right, so I'm just gonna take a moment and wipe wipe out this jar and get rid of some of these skeletons here. And take a bite of my sandwich because it's calling to me. Sorry about that, I accidentally hit the microphone. So yeah, I had one of my um, I had one of my followers um, message me, and they've said that my last couple of videos I, I seem to be getting better very quickly, and I like to thank them for their feedback. Yeah, um, I actually watch other YouTubers and try to learn how they handle themselves. And to me, it's a little strange sitting here talking into a microphone, staring at the screen while I'm playing the game or after I'm playing the game. And going back and filling in the voice because I've had technical problems. And to me, it's always felt a little strange doing it this way. Um, like I said, I've watched other YouTubers, and really the way I I handle myself doing this is I, you know, I, I I I talk to it like I'm talking to people I already know who are just as goofy about games as I am. You know, the people that watch this is. No, they're either about as goofy as games as I am. They enjoy watching stuff like this in general. Just you know, just enjoy video games in general. So, you know, hopefully, over time I'll keep getting better with my editing skills too, and all my other technical skills along with it. And my plan is to start bringing you better quality videos as I can, but until then, we'll deal with what I got. Ugh. These skeletons make this map feels like it's taken for a like ever. Doesn't help that it's all twisty and turny, too, huh? Alright. Okay, so this is the third gate. So here is where you have to choose between Roland and the hero. Depending on who you like better. I prefer to take the hero because I like to have Isaac there. As long as he has some magic left if he didn't totally burn him out. And I don't remember if I did or not. I'll find out in a second. As long as he has some degree of magic left. Oh, 31. Yeah, he's got plenty. You have the combination of his magic and the hero's magic, and that's usually enough to take care of the last bit of stuff. Let's see. I'm actually going to move Hans down here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let his party steal some experience points off of these skeletons down here. Nice thing about your missile weapons even though this is supposed to be a solid wall, you can shoot your arrows and boomerangs and everything right through it. Okay, the physics of that is mind-boggling, but don't worry about it. I'm assuming they had the early version of a portal gun. <laughs> Alright. Bloody skeletons, get out of my way, I'm getting tired of you! I'm so tired of these skeletons. How many more maps must I see your presence? I've killed so many skeletons that could build the wall like Leonidas did in the movie 300. Anybody who's watched that movie? I know, it's completely ridiculous over the top special effects, but I love it. Madness? This is Sparta! Alright. So we'll get Hans right down into the corner here. I actually moved him one off because I remember that guy that still has the bow. And I gotta get him closer because his range is a little bit shorter. And you notice Hans has four archers, himself and three others, so he's actually more archer skewed than Orloff is. His fighter, uh, I think he's called Ricky. Yeah. His fighter, Ricky, eh, he's better than Patty. Um, Mikey there, he's actually a pretty good wizard too, even if he doesn't have a whole lot of magic. Oh good, they're just going to sit there so I can pick off the other one. <sighs> it's a good thing. Time to get, time to get rolling up here. 
close to this monster dens and get me some blessed relief. Now there's a goofy little thing you can do with uh, Roland's party or the hero's party if you leave them behind here. Is that you can actually get a couple of them through the gate to help. Um, the problem with that being is that whoever your leader is won't get very far and it actually gets stuck in the gate. But you can use them to help if you can get them down fast enough. The problem is usually you can't. Oh god. For real! Arg! Alright. Okay, that's the end of that. That's the... I think that's the maximum limit of boomerang attack right there, so... There we go. A couple of cheap experience points for Hans's party. And we got more! And they'll keep respawning infin infinitely. That's a cheap way to get Hans's experience if you want to do it that way. I can't remember what triggers that one though. I don't know if it's that one starts triggering after you open the second gate or what, but... Alright. Don't want to get Roland's party on the switch quite yet. Make sure my main hero is ready to go, ready to crash the gate. And of course, we'll use Hans to chuck a couple more skeletons to pieces. And I wonder where were you? Nothing's at my doorstep. You said you had my. Yeah, that's one of the songs I happen to listen to. Like I said, that was that Maroon 5 song I said I'd listen to. Sorry, I'm just randomly singing. I'm trying to fill the space here because this is get, taking a long time. I really can't do much more right now than just set up. Okay, so the last bit, as you can obviously see, I've got some Falconers down there, and then I've got some Skeletons which are sitting on top of... A monster den. Which means at least I know I'm going to have a lot of skeletons to deal with. Let me heal them all. Alright. Let's do it. I command the drawbridge open! By the power of Grayskull! Okay, so maybe they're not heat, man. Yeah, I just thought about that. I want the archers down here, and I, l I put one of the archers on the bloody switch. So that means I'm going to have to switch them around. That's going to waste a turn. Dang it. Alright, Hans. Kill those dang skeletons already. Once... Once the, uh that gate opens, I think they start moving, so Hans isn't going to be able to attack them anymore, so if you can get them to kill the skeletons that are down here before they run off, good. If not, at least weaken this first batch, which apparently was just what I'm going to do. Oh, the falconers are on the... Great. Not only am I going to have to deal with falconers and skeletons on top of it, just lovely. Sorry, somebody just texted me something. Oh, joy! So anyway, yeah, obviously because these uh, bloody falconers are popping out of this monster den, I'm going to try to get down there as fast as I can. Damn you, Isaac. Alright. Let's 
get my archer down here as fast as I can. Get my fighter up there. And I don't think I can move Roland any more than I did I can, can I? Let's see. Come on, move Roland. Move. Move, damn you. Apparently not. That's just limit. Oh well. So get the rest of them through as best as I can. Oh, at least you can attack the one falconer. I'm gonna try to get Karen down here too, so that maybe she can throw a healing spell. I don't know how effective they're gonna be. And Hans can't attack anything anymore, so oh. That one skeleton's way beyond his reach. Can I put to sleep maybe? Nope. Oh well. Well, he's got enough magic left. He's got the hospice spell, so I can use him to. Dang it! I can use him to heal the hero when he gets around that way. Okay, you crazy falconers. Okay, good. They're gonna sit still on their monster den, so I don't have to deal with them moving around. So I can just walk up to them and kill them, and hopefully get rid of them before they start spawning too many times. Don't think Roland's party is gonna be much help here. I've already moved down past where I think he's going to be able to see them. I can try anyway. At the very least. Alright. One down, one to go. And skeletons are pouring out of the woodworks again. down here. Now the only way I'm going to be able to move Roland is i got to move this fighter, so i got to make sure I get everybody down through here as best as I can. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be much help. They might be too far away already. Well, I can find out. That angle looks like I'm fine, but you never know. Alright, Falconer, you're about to die a painful death. Since these skeletons were softened up by Hans, the first couple of them should be a piece of cake. Got as many people down through the gate as I can. Move the other fighter here. Let's see how far I can get him down. And that's it. All right, Roland. Let's see how far I can get you down. And hmm, just barely. Yeah. You notice how Roland's stuck in the gate there? Like, that didn't kill him. He's just stuck there. Oh, yeah. They're not going to be able to help at all, unfortunately. I tried. Carving through skeletons are rated 2 to the 7th power. And it's still not enough. Rolling there? Nope. He's frozen. Yep, his party's stuck. Can do nothing with you, lad. Oh, look at that. I can actually touch him, but I can't do anything to heal him. Alright, so let's just cut through these skeletons. So yeah, now you're down to just the one party. Get rid of these skeletons, and then... Save the priestesses! Yay, it's about time! The game's almost over! You all know better than that. None of these RPGs aren't that easy. 
But we can we can laugh for a moment to say that the game is almost over. Yeah, so if you just noticed that apparently the monster dinners ran out of skeletons. And there we go, Hans does his one last little gift. Healing spell. Alright. Here we go. Only one way left to go. Let's go get the priestesses. Can it really be this easy? Can we just walk in and... Hmm. Yeah, maybe it really is this easy. All we have to do is walk in, say hi to the girls, and we get to take the ball back home. There's Ferris. There's Tifa. There's Ellen. Yay! We found them! We found them! All right. But again, I am not someone who believes it's that easy, so I'm going to I'm going to get everybody set like this is a trap. Anybody who knows an RPG already knows this is a trap. And, well, let's see what happens anyway. Hey, we're safe now! Uh-uh. What? You will die? Fiends! You're dressing up as our girls. How dare you? Wait, wenches? You dare call our girls wenches? Okay. So. These three demonic-looking things. The reason why I had Olaf up here is so he could do this. Frybane. These three demons, if you let them get any turns, they're actually pretty badass. They like, cast marrow spells and a bunch of other things. They can cast Tormor. And they hit decently hard. They're not super strong. But your point is, is just to try to weaken them. I'm going to let the heroes party actually do the kill blow. So, I'm going to let everybody up here chuck their boomerangs. Huh? Can I reach the other one? Can I reach the other one? Nope. Nope. Okay. You know what? Let me move... Uh you out of the way. Chuck your boomerang. Well, I only left you with seven points, so I'm just gonna leave you. And now let's test out our new spell. Around. You spin me right round, baby, right round like a record, baby. Yes, I know I sing really horribly, but this is what around does. It picks them, it swishes them around, and they get all dizzy, and they take damage. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. Now these guys are, are actually kind of badass if you let them get the chance, but since I had everyone set up, piece of cake. And victory! Hey, no victory screen. Hey, we defeated all of them! Let's retreat to the Winga! <laughs> Drink all you like. Let's get... Let's get smashed. Honch, dear. I think I have enough drunking. Hey, look at this. I'm so freaking popular, man. Good thing I gave fighting a shot. <laughs> so everybody here is happy, pretty much. We got the Wall of Banalus back. 
killed all the monsters. Life is good. The only problem is we don't have our priestesses. Well, I tell you what, that's going to wrap up this episode. I'm just going to go do the usual healing and stuff like that. Appreciate you all for watching. Sorry this particular episode took so bleeding long. Um, but I will see you for episode 10. And until then, take care. Y'all have a good night. And if you get a chance, watch a couple of Robin Williams uh, comedy stand-ups. Because may Robin Williams rest in peace. So I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.